everybody. I been trying really hard to do this technical stuff and I don't know if I'm winning or losing. I thought that I could have it sideways so that you could see the whole window, but it's not working for me when I press live video. She probably saw my ears in the video there. So anyway, hope this works. So again, happy Easter to you. Hope you had a great week. Uh, I did and uh, the sun is shining and uh, it's a happy day. That was my nephew, Aaron McDonald from Mabu. Uh, and one of his uh, good songs that just pick you up and make you happy. And uh, the gal that's harmonizing with him is actually our daughter, Kelly. So uh, I thought that would be a nice way to open up today's show because we just have to be happy no matter what's going on. So we're going to make crispy crunch squares today. Uh, they're pretty easy um, recipe to do, pretty quick and easy for, uh, especially for the young ones that are out there that, but a parent has to be with you because we're going to be uh, using the stove, uh, the top of the stove to cook this. So the first thing I want you to do is prepare, uh, pre-measure all the ingredients. So I'm gonna tell you what you need. Um, you need one cup of sugar, and uh, just you can put the one cup of sugar right now if you want in a, in a pot, but a two quart pot. So I'm going to put one cup of sugar in there, and uh, these make an awful a whole bunch of squares. And uh, you don't even need a, a cookie sheet. Uh, all you need is a great big piece of parchment paper and put it on your table. If you don't have that, uh, you can use a cookie sheet, but you're gonna have to, you know, butter it a little bit so that they don't really stick uh, too much. And uh, okay, so one cup of white sugar, and you're gonna need one cup of corn syrup. Now the corn syrup I use is the, the kind of the clear kind, uh, but the other kind is just fine. Um, this is just the kind that I've been buying more recently. So one cup. I have a few little things that I wanna to talk to you about when we have our visit, when we have our tea, a little later. So we'll talk about that as we go along. Hope you all had, had a good week. We're managing, you know what I mean? We all have to do this together and uh, make sure that this darn thing goes away. So, you've got one cup of white sugar and one cup of corn syrup. I'm just gonna mix it in um, the, um, the pot it's in right now. And then I'll tell you what else to pre-measure, but you can just, Mix that with a spoon or a spatula, it's up to you. And we're gonna be putting this on the stove here shortly. So the next thing I want you to pre-measure is uh, in a two cup measure or however you want, put one and a half cups of peanut butter, but don't put it in the pot, just have it ready. One and a half cups of peanut butter. And uh, the other in another bowl, put four cups of Rice Krispies. All right, and uh, and that's basically all we need for the base of uh, of the squares. Okay, so I'm going to take you over to my stove, and uh, we'll we'll start the next step. Okay. So you just take your time and I'll be with you in a minute. close up seeing my hair <laughs> all right I put 
you right there on my counter. Okay, just checking out the, the, the messages. Oh my God, you guys, I, I try to answer everything. I, I, and I even have my daughter, sometimes my daughter will kick in. She's in Fort Mac. Everybody has, every one of the kids I think has the rights to, to uh, my stuff. And uh, it's just, it's, it's fun. And so my daughter Tammy in Fort Mac, thank you very much. She's been answering here and there. And if you get a message saying, yes, she does this or that, it's just from her. But I try to get to listen and check and watch all of these messages coming in. And I really want to get back to every one of you. And um, so, is everybody uh, kind of ready to go here? Hi, Natalie. I see Natalie Lorette. Anyway, so you've got one cup of sugar and one cup of corn syrup, and you have one and a half cups of peanut butter ready over there. And in another bowl, you have four cups of Rice Krispies. But we'll, we'll go slow, okay? So I'm gonna turn it on. Turn it on probably medium. And really, you're just gonna stir. You're gonna stir until the white sugar is, has, has come together with the corn syrup. And the minute that you see a few bubbles happening, Yes, turn the heat off right then. If, if you let it come to a full boil, what happens is the square will be, end up being kind of crispy and, and you don't want that. You want, you want them to be chewy. That's the way I like them anyway. And uh, I tell you, I, I, used to, I used to use a, a, a cookie sheet all the time, but I ended up having to get Cecil to cut them for me all the time. And when I used to work in the oil sands in Fort McMurray, you know, every now and again, you'd say, oh, wish I could make a treat for all the, the young fellas that were there. And they called me Mama MJ, a lot of them out there. And uh, they, uh, so anyway, I would get these ingredients and that's when I started using the parchment paper a ton easier. And uh, we would make them you know, just in the microwave and do the best we could, but God, they loved them and, and they were so appreciative of the little taste of home. Okay, this is, this is coming together. I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna take you over to, the, to this pot so you can see. Hold on, as long as I don't lose this. So, um, Lord God, I can't see anything here. Are you seeing in there? So it's, it's, it's not, um, it's not coming together just yet, but it's getting there. I hope you can see that. All right. I'll show it to you when it's just ready to, uh, for when we're supposed to stop. Now, I don't know if you can hear the music that I'm, I'm playing or not, but honestly, and I keep saying, I'm, I'm, all, I'm playing all my relatives, I find, but uh, I, I have to, I just love them all. I'm looking at my hair, my God. I did wash my hands, I just didn't do that step, but I know you guys all are taking those precautions. But, um, yeah, so Aaron is my nephew, and that's that's my uh, my brother's son, and uh, he's pretty special to me. And uh, his his father died when he was twenty eight. When when um, when my brother was twenty eight, uh, Aaron was just fifteen months old, and so I uh, got a big soft spot for for that boy, and he loves to sing, and he's writing songs all the time and uh, what's who's playing the fiddle now are my two nieces red two beautiful vibrant redheads Don and Margie Beaton if you if you know them some of you may know them and and uh, they're they're wonderful okay I'll turn their music up a little bit later it's, right now we'll keep it down so see have a look at that can you see that
done. Shut the heat off when that happens. I hope you could see that. So I'm just gonna stir it there a little bit. And I'm gonna put you back here. All right, how's everybody doing? I hope you're doing okay. Because that's that's kind of a critical part. Just just it comes to that boil. You don't want it any more than that. Just when they just it just kind of starts. So now we have one and a half cups of peanut butter, and we're going to put that in there. Lord behold, I'm a low battery. Leave it to me to not. I'll I'll fix that in a minute. I'll have you listening to music, and I'll get my charger. So you're going to put one and a half cups of peanut butter in there. Okay, just stir that up until it's mixed up really good. Hope everybody's caught up. So I hope everybody started off the day really good today and for all you Christians out there, hope you got to have your service over the, over the internet. I know I did. 10 o'clock this morning. I was really glad to have that done. And then the Easter Bunny, of course. I was FaceTiming with, with Mitchell over the road there. And their three fellows were outside doing an Easter egg hunt. That was kind of special. Okay, I'm gonna show you this now that the peanut butter is all mixed in. Okay, you seen that? That's what it looks like. All right, now I'm gonna add four cups of Rice Krispies and then I'll take you over to the table. And just mix very carefully, go slow. Especially if there are children stirring at this point. You go slow or else you'll have Rice Krispies everywhere. Now, I know that there are people out there. I, I have a grandson who is severely allergic. Uh, my Aiden is, is uh, severely allergic to, to nuts, all nuts. So, uh, I haven't been making these in a long time. But when he hasn't been coming around, I thought I'd make this recipe so that everybody could... could make it too and uh, but you can substitute with wow butter of course and uh, and then there are those that aren't allergic to almonds and you can use almond butter which I'm sure anybody who saw the ingredients would have made those substitutions and then there are those who are gluten intolerant or they have celiac they have to buy uh, the Rice Krispies and uh, and that aisle to make sure that uh, they're not getting any wheat. Because Rice Krispies, you would think that it would just be made with rice. But of course, in the ingredients list, it says wheat. Okay, so this is all nicely mixed together. And you wanna, you wanna get it while it's hot. So I'm gonna take you over to the table again. All right. Put you back on your little stand over here. All right. Do you know what I even did today? You know how you shouldn't be talking, but anyway, I um, I got up and I dressed, good clothes, put makeup on. I even put high heels on because there's been some days I'm still in my pajamas at, at dinner time because nobody's coming to business. Nobody's going to catch you. <laughs> okay, next thing I want you to, uh, to do is if you're using parchment paper, take a great big, a great big thing and just lay it on the table. Okay, and if you have a cookie sheet, have your cookie sheet ready and just put a little bit of butter on there so it's not sticky I would also have a glass 
filled with water with a few tablespoons in it because to spread this out sometimes your spoon gets sticky and it's so frustrating then it won't spread for you so while it's nice and hot like this okay what do you first time you want Heather McLean, I, I, I know girl, I know. But I, I, yeah, it's just the way it is. Nobody's gonna catch you, so might as well be comfy. But I try, I try to get up and at some point I get up and I, and I put my makeup on and I get dressed and you know what? It does make you feel better. It just makes you feel okay, I'm good. Okay, we got a big pile on there. I hope you can see this. Yeah, you can see that. Now I'm gonna take a, a spoon with water on it. I'm gonna spread it all out. And basically you're gonna spread it out pretty much as big as, um, as a cookie sheet. It's probably about, I would say about a quarter inch thick. My God, I'm thinking of all the times I made this out in camp. This just makes a ton of squares. So it's a good thing if you ever have to, if we ever get out of this confinement, <laughs> that uh, if you have to make something for bake sale or whatever, see, see my spoon is already sticky. I want another spoon. And spread it out. I wonder if you're all having turkey or ham dinners today. Usually on Easter weekend, we, we can expect at our house, uh, you know, 15 to 20 on any given holidays. You know, kids come home from Halifax and, and uh, we have to set up two tables in the kitchen, decorate a bit. Not as good as Grandma Joan out there, but she goes all out. She lives in Minusville. If there's anybody that lives close to Minusville and knows Joan Tomlinson, she is the decorator for every holiday. Just amazing. I've seen pictures. I haven't actually been there during the holiday. And she would be my son Brennan's uh, mother-in-law. And hi to Mick too, if he's out there and watching. Okay, that's about it. Are you guys there too in your cookie sheet or on your parchment paper? I'm going to need that third spoon. It's getting sticky. Okay, so thickness wise, I just tap it in along the side to make it a good rectangle. It's a, uh, oh, it smells good, doesn't it? It's about a quarter inch thick. And we're done and we're ready for the topping. I just thought these would be a nice Easter treat. And, and my grandsons out west, Brody, Ben, Jake, and Oliver, they, uh, it was their suggestion that I, that I make this. And uh, Brody doesn't like chocolate. So when I would make it when he'd be home, I would just not put the chocolate topping over so far. I'd leave a, a row just for him. So it's nice and ready to go. And uh, I hope your ears is the same way. The reason it's so easy with uh, on parchment, it's just that the cutting, the cutting is so slick with the pizza cutter. Love it. Okay, if you're ready, we're gonna go to, to the topping now which is a bag of chocolate chips and a bag of butterscotch chips. Butterscotch chips are, are not nut free. So, uh, and why, I don't know why that would be, but it's the way it is. So I have them in a nice big bowl here and uh, I'm just gonna mix them up. You know me and mix them by hand. I just mix the package of chocolate chips in with butterscotch chips and the butterscotch chips with the chocolate chips just oh my god the smell of that together it's just you want to eat them right away and um but if you don't have that and i know that some uh 
uh, have different things. You just use two packages of chocolate chips if you if that's all you have. Or uh, I know Michelle, my friend in in Dartmouth there, she has a bag of chocolate chips and a bag of white chocolate chips. That's all she could get because they didn't have butterscotch chips in the uh, stores. The stores are, are running out of baking supplies because a lot of people are home and uh, finding their their niche with, with the home baking, which is wonderful. So I'm gonna take this over to my microwave and I'll take you along with me. Just hold on a second. I'm just gonna put you right here so I can show it to you. Now, um, do you know what? I'm just gonna go get my charger. Be awful to lose you in the middle of all this. Just bear with me. Lord, have mercy on me. Put that in there. Okay, so a little tip on, on the, uh, the melting of the chocolate. Um, this is probably gonna take two or three minutes, but you should always melt chocolate at, at half power, okay? power level five. I don't know what kind of microwave you have, but even the smaller micro microwaves will have that. The default is probably 10. That's, um, so I'm just gonna put it in. And on my microwave, I set the time. So I'm gonna set it for, say, three minutes. I'm not gonna hit start. Then I'm gonna go to power level. Where the heck did that go? Power. And I'm just gonna enter five and start and uh i'll just watch watch it after a, a, a minute i will take it out check it often after every minute but i i can't remember the the reason for that is if you put it at full power sometimes uh that will cook the chocolate and uh you don't want that you don't want that because then it wouldn't be nice and shiny and and uh melted And um, I, um, my turkey's in the oven. My husband Cecil was up early getting all the vegetables ready because he knew I was gonna be in the kitchen. He loves to, to prepare meals. And so he's got the turkey in the oven, he made the dressing, he cut the potatoes and the carrots and the turnip. And I made the dessert. Yesterday I made the dessert and I made um, a dessert called, uh, oh God, what's the score bar ice cream dessert it's with ice cream and score bars and oreo cookie crumbs and it's delicious and then a little later i go i make this nice warm caramel sauce and you pour the caramel sauce on it when it's warm it's so nice and check this now actually i i will make that some some sunday we'll make that so it's just starting Microwaves are different. Mine tends to be a little slower, I think. This is the dandiest little thing. When I was visiting my brother in Michigan, he had one of these in his microwave. It's just a, like a little cover. 
it's got magnets. When you're not putting it over something that, you know, like lasagna or something that's splashing, uh, you just push it up to the ceiling off the, off the microwave oven and, it, it, and the magnet keeps it there. Sometimes like that, you bump into it and it falls down. But it's great. I got it at Bed Bath & Beyond. Great, great, great thing. Smells good. It's a great mixture of the butterscotch chips and the chocolate chips. And try it again. What's oh, coming? I have about 50 seconds left on that three minutes. I've never ever timed them before, so I'm just guessing just what I do. I'm just guessing. <laughs> Hi, Jeanette Gillis from Marguerite. Formerly from Marguerite, I think she said. I missed that. Okay, I'll tell you what the measurements are. Somebody just asked what the measurements are. Okay, so one cup of white sugar and one cup of corn syrup. You put that together in, in a two quart pot and, and you mix it all and you, you um, bring it just to the boil. When it, it just starts bubbling all the way around, take it off then. And once that's done, add one and a half cups of peanut butter mix that up you remove it from the heat and add one and a half cups of peanut butter and then you add four cups of rice krispies and mix it all up and put it either on a buttered cookie sheet or on a my preference is a nice big piece of parchment paper i guess you know i like <laughs> parchment paper it's just it's wonderful okay so it's coming along oh it's almost done so three minutes is not enough to get it nice and smooth. So whoever I was telling that to, you have four cups of, of Rice Krispies and then you spread it out on either a buttered uh, cookie sheet pan or um, on a nice big piece of parchment paper. And then you melt one package of butterscotch chips and one package of chocolate chips, but not on full power, just on half power. I'm going to put it in for, I'm gonna see another minute. Now, if I wasn't in front of the camera, you know what I'd do? I'd probably lick my fingers. That's what we all do, I bet. I gotta get a paper towel. Try it after the 30 seconds and just see it might be ready yes it is ready so can you see that it's nice and smooth no lumps so you should spread that on the top okay I've got to take you with me and the charger bear with me For dropping in. And this charger, oh my god, it's the best thing I ever got. It's got a 10 foot cord on it. Excuse me while I plug her in.
broke it. Yeah, I think it is. Hold on a second. I'm so professional. <laughs> okay, that's as good as it's gonna get. All right. Okay. So I'm gonna pour that out. Oh my goodness, that smells so good. I love chocolate. It just makes me good. <laughs> Obviously. Now, kids, yeah, you can lick that bowl after, okay? Okay, so you just spread it out to all the edges, okay? And that's our recipe for today, really. But I'll tell you, Try to go to the very edges, and even if it spills over a little bit, that's good too. The hard part now is waiting for it to set. It's gonna take a couple of hours. I guarantee you, there'll be some of you that'll be taking the edges, because that's what I'm gonna have to do to have tea with you. Oh, I didn't put my kettle on, shoot. I'll just do that in a second. Gosh, I've made a ton of these over the years. I'm telling you, the recipe I got from Cecil's sister, Georgie. She lives in Port Hood, and I thought the first time I, I tried them that I died and went to heaven. Just, it's one of those things, you know, you cut it, cut it into small squares. You, you might as well cut it into big squares because you're just there. Popping one, and then popping another. Okay. So, the thing of it is, uh, now it has to set. And I said a couple of hours. But um, some people say, well, why didn't you just put it in the fridge? Do you know what'll happen? It, you could do it a little bit and back out and back in. Because otherwise, it'll separate. The chocolate layer might separate from the bottom if you do it like into the freezer or into the fridge to try to hurry it up and it just doesn't work okay so you just have to let it sit on the counter and then when you're you'll you'll see it starting to harden and and the chocolate gets dull uh, along the edges and that's when you can you know slice a little edge off and and uh, have a little nip until they're they're all done but uh, I can't even tell you how many squares they make. I'm telling you, it's, there, there's a lot, but it's a great little recipe and it's fun for, for the kids to, to have it too. Okay, I'm going to put the kettle on and hope you can stay for tea, okay? Oops, you don't need to see my porch. Nothing but hats and mitts and boots. Gosh, be glad to get rid of those. Anyway, okay. Here we are. So, a couple of things that happened this week. A lot of people were calling and they, they, they can't seem to find the recipes uh, easily, right? So, um, the, uh, I put them, I, I typed up the recipes and then I use this little snippet tool and it saves it as a picture. 
so you just draw a square around the recipe that you typed up and and then it's it's a, it's a JPEG file and I created a, a photo album under tunes and wooden spoons and uh, called recipes and all of the recipes are in that folder and uh, so still people you know just asking and wondering and can't find it and maybe couldn't find the video but there is a video folder in there at the same place approximately where the um, pictures are there's there's a, an album called videos and that's where the videos are met. the cinnamon rolls is there the chocolate chip jumbles is there the brown bread is there and soon sometime today before I have supper I'll, I'll try to put this one in there sometimes it takes a while or, or maybe it goes automatically yeah it does so um, so that being said created a YouTube channel called tunes and wooden spoons as well and that that's easier for you to find the, the, the things we've done in the past and uh, right where the the video is right where the description is that's where I typed in the recipe and uh, that that's going to be easier for you to go uh, and and find the the videos and the the recipe they're right there under tunes and wooden spoons and uh, so that's kind of nice and easier for you if you so tell anybody who's asking that's where they can find it but when I go to uh, do another uh, live feed it's it is from the tunes and wooden spoons um, Facebook page and uh, Darn it, there was a thought in my head there that I thought I should say, and, and it's gone. Isn't there anybody else like that? Um, so, oh yes, I, I know what I wanted to tell you. Um, do you like my earrings? Can you see them? I'll bring you up close. See, these are a Celtic symbol. Well, you know what? I'm so lucky I have the greatest neighbor on our street. Our street or road, really, we're in the country. Uh, no, Mitchell is texting me here. My fan is not on. Mitchell, that is the kettle. The kettle is boiling. You know, kids? <laughs> the kettle is boiling. It's just about boiled. I'm gonna put the tea on and that noise will not be in the background. Okay. What was I saying? Oh, my earrings. Yeah, I was going to say I have the greatest neighbors. And uh, our, our street or road is about just about a kilometer long. There's probably a dozen houses or so on, on the road. And one of our, the neighbors on the road is Daryl McLeod. Daryl is a retired uh, teacher. He taught art uh, in our school. He taught with my husband. My husband's a retired teacher as well. But all through Daryl's uh, career as a teacher, he was also a jeweler. And uh, he made many nice things for me that Cecil bought for me. Uh, he, he made a family ring, which I have to take to him and get stretched a little bit. His fingers must be growing. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, so anyway, I was talking to Daryl and, and, and uh, I love these earrings. I love these earrings. They're Celtic, uh, Celtic knot. I don't know what the proper name is. But I got Daryl to give me some of his jewelry to show you because, honest to God, he is amazing. And he has made wedding rings for various couples. Just absolutely beautiful. I'm going to hold up his card and I'll put it, I'll put it on, on, on my, on YouTube. Can you see that? McLeod of Cape Breton. He does chains, he does rings, he does earrings, uh, just beautiful, beautiful gold and, uh, you know, nothing but the best, you know. And, and look, look at, for you Cape Bretoners out there, look at the rings that he makes, Cape Breton ring. My son has, our son has one of these rings and he loves it. And Daryl, look, he even has... Oh my God, look at my hair, it's sticking up. Um, 
look, earrings with the Cape Breton Island and more Celtic symbols there. And he's got these and these and these. <laughs> but anyway, Daryl, I will settle up with you later. I'm, I'm just going to make a little suggestion here to people. And I was thinking, oh, wouldn't it be nice if, if I gave a pair of these earrings um, to, to somebody that is um, uh, uh, on my Facebook page, Tunes and Little Spoons. So I'm going to buy the earrings, but I really feel like I need to give back to you because you've made me just so happy. And this is what you have to do. This is what you have to do. So number one, I hope you have liked my page. You have to like my Tunes and Wooden Spoons page, number one. Number two, you have to subscribe to the YouTube channel, uh, which is called Tunes and Wooden Spoons. <laughs> and then you have to send me an email. And my email, Tunes and wooden spoons at gmail.com. And what I will do is I will put all of your names in a spreadsheet, a spreadsheet, an Excel spreadsheet. And you'll have a number from one to whatever, however many, you know, send it in to me. And then there's this thing that you can do on Google, and you'll put the starting number and the last number, and you ask it to randomly draw a number. And whoever's number uh, is, is it, it picks, and I'm going to videotape that happening. Um, I will get in touch with you, uh, and uh, you'll have to give me your 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 address, and I will send you the earrings because uh, I just love Daryl. He's an awesome guy and great neighbor, and uh, he makes just incredible stuff. And I uh, hope you go to his website. And it is, I'm not even sure, dare, um, uh, www.cbrings.ca. Okay, and he lives on E Street where I live. So that's one thing I wanted to talk to you about. And the other thing, there, I mean, all of you, I just love you all because you come into my home on Sunday afternoons and uh, we need to have a little visit. And uh, I've got to set the tea because the kettle stopped. Okay, Mitchell? So, there's a gal in Annie Ganesh, and her name is Sonia Boyd. S-O-N-Y-A Boyd. She got in touch with me, and she sells Pamper Chef. And she, there was no, no arguing with her. She wanted to send me things that would make my life as a little baker easier just as a thank you for doing the videos and i got this box this week and there's so many awesome little things in there that i love but these are my favorite look at these spoons isn't that what wooden spoons and they're they're uh, they're made of teak just gorgeous and of course that's where all my stuff is that I have since years and years and years since my daughter Tammy was was selling Pampered Chef. So I'm just going to turn it back on Sonia and if you guys know Sonia and you love the stuff, maybe you'll order something for from her. I think that would be great. So Sonia, I know you wouldn't take any money for this and I know you didn't expect me to do this, but I'm just telling you, I I sincerely appreciate what you did. That was so nice of you, and I just love it. She also gave me a really nice cookie rack, and there's so many things, but I'll be using them over the time. Okay, I'm gonna go set my tea. Got my cup all ready, okay? Buddy McLean, 
Nice to touch base after all these years. So, um, let me see now. So Dawn and Margie, um, their, their CD is called um, A Taste of Gaelic. And I don't know how many years it's been out now, but they're definitely due to, to do another CD. They're, they're, they're wonderful. And um, there's actually a tune on there that's named after me. And uh, I think it's called Mary Janet's Fancy. There's a Strass Bay followed by a reel. It's, it's a good one, too. And, um, oh yeah, does anybody out there, I know somebody posted something about they were doing a sourdough starter. Um, do you um, know anybody who has a sourdough starter recipe? I'd really like to get back to this lady, Beverly, that was looking for a recipe for that because I it's not something that I, I ever made and I would um, if anybody wants to send me one that they have used I'll get back to her maybe she's found one by now okay um, she's gonna go pour my tea I'm gonna check the edge of these squares see if there's any way I can get a little corner even though it's still kind of wet ah it's not set at all but it's still good I'm gonna I'm gonna get my pizza cutter and cut a little edge off to have with my tea. So I've just got a little edge here and it's still, it's still not uh, set of course. And uh, just gonna have a little taste. They're dangerous. They're really good. <laughs> so, there have been a few people have contacted me about making. When am I going to make a pie? So I'm thinking that next Sunday, I'm going to make two pies. I'm going to make an apple pie, and I'm going to make a butterscotch pie. God help me, okay? You, you know, when somebody's watching, that's when something bad happens. But it's something I, I make all the time, and so far it hasn't failed, but don't you know the pastry's gonna go sticky or make a big rip in it or something, but we'll do that together, and we'll just bear bear with that. I'm just gonna use a eight inch pie plate, and uh, the butterscotch filling is a recipe that my mother-in-law, Marie, uh, used to make all the time. And she was such a good, good cook. And uh, it's one of those things that everything, before you start doing it at the stove, you have to have everything within reach. It's not something that you can just add as you go along. You have to have everything pre-measured and and. And, and mixed up like there's 
eggs and milk and flour that you have to mix up together. But I don't usually put the, I, I don't like putting the recipe out there first because I don't want people trying and failing things. I, I don't like to do that and have to save something for Sunday. No sense giving you a recipe and you're going to make it. And then what are you going to watch me for on Sunday? <laughs> so I hope that um, I'll give you what, the basic ingredients, that what you need. And uh, we'll, we'll go from there. I'll, I'll pin, pin it to the top of the page so that it's the first post that you'll see on, um, on, um, on my page. And... I'm thinking that that might be all that I feel like I'm forgetting to tell you something, but uh, anyway, oh, I know what I was going to tell you, and, and I've already put it out there, but tomorrow morning, anybody who's around here, oh my God, it just cracks me up how, how this has become a, a thing, you know, and, and all the great things that are happening. It's just so fun for me because it certainly passes the time when you're here, just you and your husband looking at one another and watching TV and there's only so much you can do. And, uh, but yeah, so Liz Rigney contacted me from CTV Morning Live, uh, Atlantic, Atlantic Canada version. There's, there's one in Montreal and whatever, but, uh, and all across Canada, no doubt. But anyway, uh, we're, she uh, has uh, one of her gals is going to be actually making cinnamon rolls from the video and interviewing me at the same time and throughout the show they are uh, they're going to be checking in on her and how she's doing making the cinnamon rolls so it's it's going to be great because she she declares that she is not a baker at all so she's going to try to make it as a non-baker and see how they turn out so pray to god that that she can do it and uh I think that would be kind of cool. So that airs uh, Nova Scotia time, uh, you know, Atlantic Daylight time. Uh, it's 7 a.m. until 9. And so I think, um, I, I think uh, it's on at the early part. And my daughter Tammy just sent me a text there from Fort Mac. And she said, how do you store, store the squares? Okay, so... What I do is once they're all set and, and fine and ready to be cut, I like to keep them just in a can. Uh, you know, like, what are those chocolates called at Christmas time? The holiday, what, what the heck is that name of that? But I one of those tin cans anyway. Um, and uh, I, I put them in there with some wax paper and just bent, put them in the fridge, but if you if you want to have one out of the fridge, fresh out of the fridge, yeah, it, it they're really hard and chewy. And uh, hi, Margie. Margie and Jeff are out there in Fort Mac making them as well. Quality Street, thank you, Susie. Um, Quality Street cans, just one of those cans, but you could put it in a Tupperware container or you know whatever. But it's it's one that you can certainly um, share with your neighbors so many of you are are making double batches and sharing with your neighbors and dropping them dropping it off outside their door and uh we're doing good you know if if we all just get up in the morning and have a positive attitude and just say you know this, the, the more we do this the sooner it'll be over and just listen to our health officials and our premier and our uh, prime minister you know, all of the warnings that are out there. Uh, just listen to everybody and we'll get through this. But if we're, we're low down and humdrum and whatever, then you just feel like that. So try to be positive, try to be happy and uh, have a wonderful, wonderful week. And uh, I love you all and just be good. Bye-bye.